I'd like to turn to CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berardelli. Jeff, what is the latest on Hurricane Laura, and are we still concerned about that storm surge? Yeah, so at least for another couple of hours, there's still storm surge. And of course, there are live wires down as well in certain places, or at least the possibility of live wires down. The point is, it, it, you know, there are a lot of hazards on the ground there. So even though the storm surge is going to be making its way out to sea soon, there's still at least some leftover water. There's still hazards. So just be aware of that. The storm is still a hurricane, but it's on the verge of becoming a tropical storm. We're going to receive word any minute now from the National Hurricane Center, located right here in the northern part of Louisiana, east of uh, Shreveport, and it's kind of hooking uh, north. Northeast. So it's going to be weakening during the day today, which is some good news. Some of the most dramatic pictures, we showed you this from a refinery in, uh, in Louisiana. There are some pictures. I got them from Twitter, but I know we have some video of it as well. So that, I would say, is one of the most dramatic pictures. And it goes to show you when you have so many chemical and oil refineries in the same area, there is the possibility of damage to these. Uh, so that's that. I thought those were some uh, interesting pictures. And in addition, um, right there in the Lake Charles area, there was a Confederate monument that I believe the city was not willing to take down. But Laura, uh, in fact, did take down this Confederate monument. If you look closely enough, you can see it there. But then you can't see it right there. And then the Capitol One building. And look at all the windows being blown out from this storm. So you can see the sheer power. Uh, winds were gusting to 130, 140 miles an hour. That's what we measured. However, you know, we don't have uh, a tremendous amount of, you know, observations from this area. Uh, some of the area, at least, is fairly remote. So when we say that it doesn't look like it was as bad as, as we thought it would be in terms of, uh, let's say, storm surge, where we measured it up to around 10 or 11 feet, it was predicted to be 15 or 20 feet. It's also conceivable it just missed some of the observing stations, if you will, some of the, uh, some of the measurements. Um, and in terms of wind gusts, we measured 130 to 140 miles an hour, but when it made it on shore, it had winds of 150. So that would make it the strongest storm we've had at least in 150 years uh, in Louisiana. So that's pretty remarkable as well. Uh, Lana, there's a look at the radar, and you can see that the heaviest rain is now going to be moving up into Arkansas. One of the saving graces from this storm is that it was moving really fast, 15 miles an hour. If you remember Hurricane Harvey from a couple of years ago, it stalled, produced 50 to sure. 60 inches of rain. This only producing really only about nine inches of rain. As it moves north, the major issue is going to be, I think, tornadoes now. Uh, this is very typical of landfalling systems. So for the next couple of days, and even in the middle Atlantic area on Saturday, the possibility of tornadoes as the circulation moves by. Well, Jeff, uh, going back to some of the, the images you showed, I'm wondering how prepared was the Gulf region for this storm? We obviously have been talking about this for a while. We've been listening to local officials, officials with their storm preps. How, uh, how well did everyone do in terms of that preparation? It seems like most folks heeded the warnings. I mean, this was... And you could see it becoming a catastrophic storm as it kind of picked up steam across the Gulf of Mexico. I think the only reason the, sword, or the surge wasn't worse is because the storm hadn't reached its, its maximum strength until it got to the coast. Storms like Katrina and Rita, they were weakening storms when they hit the Gulf Coast. However, they were such monster Cat 5s with winds of 185 miles an hour, 180 miles an hour over the Gulf that for days they were building up their surge. So that might have been a saving grace with this system. I want to show you uh, one really interesting um, set of images that I have for you. This one right here. You asked about how prepared they are in the Gulf. One of the problems is, is population is expanding extraordinarily fast. So this is a, a, a comparison. This is night. This is day. It's basically the same map. It shows the cone going over the cities here along the Gulf Coast. And it shows how these cities, Houston right there, and Beaumont, Port Arthur there, are expanding. So the amount of people living there expanding over the past 40 years. In fact, I think there's been an 80% increase or so in housing there. So the more exposure you have, the more vulnerability you have, the more damage you're going to have. So that's what's been happening. Despite the fact that we have climate change and we have stronger hurricanes making its way on shore, people are populating the coastline like never before. And so there's a lot more exposure. A lot more people are at risk now than they were back just 40, 50 years ago. All right, Jeff Baradelli, thank you.